Like many of my reviews and video topics, many of them are requested by you, the viewer. So when you all asked me to test a pinion bike, I got to asking around and I landed on Viral, which was suggested by a handful of you all. So in this video, we're gonna talk about one of their bikes, the Viral Derive, a well-balanced titanium hardtail built around the pinion driver that is definitely eager to be loaded up. Let's do it. Before we jump any further, I just want to let everybody know that this video is supported in part by Terravel Tires. What is Terravel's fastest gravel tire? Well, it's the Terravel Washburn. The Washburn works great for gravel racers or bike packers seeking speed or anyone who rides plenty of pavement on their gravel bike. Its slick center keeps rolling resistance low, but the transition tread keeps you planted in loose corners. The Washburn comes in light and supple and durable casings in a variety of 700 and 650B options. So for more on the Washburn, make sure to hit this card right here or also find the link below. Viral was started by Steve Damahitti, who also co-founded Niner Bikes back in 2004. So he has since left Niner and has kind of taken on a variety of different cycling projects over the last handful of years, including Viral Bikes. Steve is an engineer, an overall bike nerd, and it shows not only making uh, and engineering a wide variety of bikes, but also thinking outside the box or with the box, with the pinion driver. Steve and I have actually been talking via email for months, and while we've never met, his passion for cycling and creating bikes and bike parts is clear. All right, so the Derive is sold as a frame kit, which comes with the frame and the pinion driver and all the accessories, but they also sell fully customizable, complete bikes, giving the rider complete control over the build kit. So because of that, I'm only really gonna be talking about the frame and maybe a few other components in this video rather than talking about what all came on the bike because it's always different. The Derive is made out of a triple butted titanium tube set that was noticeably comfortable, especially over the course of a multi-day bikepacking trip. But it still remains stiff enough to, you know, maintain a nice efficiency, a nice feel, especially in the rear end, as this is actually required to maintain the integrity of a belt drive bike. All right, so I'm five, nine and a half, and Steve actually recommended a medium, and so that's what I went with. The medium comes with a 460 millimeter reach, a 624 millimeter stack, and normally I'm pretty comfortable with a 460 millimeter reach, but at first I felt really scrunched on the bike. Steve sent the bike with 780 millimeter bars with a 35 millimeter stem, so all I did was throw an 800 mil bar on with a 50 millimeter stem, and it Felt pretty good, I was pretty dialed, especially after I added the 120 millimeter fork, but more on that soon. All right, so the bike comes with a 66.5 degree head tube angle, a 75.5 degree seat tube angle, and a 1,191 millimeter wheelbase measured with a 120 millimeter fork. The bike also comes with a 432 millimeter seat tube and came with a 150 millimeter internally routed dropper post, but I certainly have more space if I wanted to run a larger dropper post on this bike, which is nice. The bike also comes with a breakaway frame right at the bottom, right by the dropout and you also have adjustable dropout so that you can fit that uh, belt drive on there. The shortest chainstay length on the bike comes in at 434 millimeters and it can be as long as 450.5 millimeters. So according to my measurements, I ended up testing the bike with a 447 millimeter rear end, give or take, with a properly tensioned 113 tooth belt and a 32 tooth drive ring front and rear. So yes, I could definitely feel the length, especially the rear end length of this bike, especially when it was unloaded. It was just not as snappy as some other hardtails that I pedaled. But when I loaded it up, the extra length and weight paired with the somewhat lower bottom bracket made this bike feel super sure-footed. So I did encounter my fair share of pedal strikes with these 27.5 by 2.8 inch wheels, but an easy price to pay in my opinion for quick handling yet a very grounded feeling rig. So I did end up throwing 29 inch wheels on the bike and it definitely did raise the bike up a little bit. But overall, the uh, bottom bracket drop on this bike is 47 millimeters. When you purchase a bike from Viral, the thing you need to understand is what length chainstay you actually wanna run, as it will vary based on tire clearance and the gearing of your pinion. 
but you are definitely in good hands with Steve as he's extremely knowledgeable. That said, if I wanted to run, say, that 434 millimeter rear end, all I would need to do was just run a shorter belt, 111 tooth belt, which would allow me to run the bike in the shortest position with 27.5 inch wheels. I personally really like a little bit of a shorter rear end on a bike like this, so that would be the only other orientation of the belt drive that I wish I tested. So speaking of wheels, the bike's rear end is built around 148 millimeter boost spacing and has the ability to run 27.5 plus, as I mentioned, or 29 inch wheels. I tested both wheel set options on this bike, but I much preferred the 27.5 by 2.8 inch option. The extra volume paired with a more nimble wheel size is a true hoot on this bike, making it super easy to maneuver around tight corners while also handling high speed single track descents very well. And while the 29 inch wheel diameter was a bit faster, I held my own with the 27.5 wheels. In riding with my friends in Arizona on the Queen's Ransom, I realized it's not as slow as I remembered. And yes, I kept up with them. So I ended up rolling a 29 by 2.6 inch Maxxis Recon in the back, which actually came out to 2.5 inches on 28 millimeter rims and it fit and it fit pretty good. However, I don't think I'd be able to push those dropouts up with the 29 inch wheel too much further uh, without hitting that pinion bridge. And while we're on the topic, Steve actually specced this particular bike with Viral's very own 27.5 inch rims uh, that come in 38 millimeter width. So they really kind of widen that uh, tire profile out a little bit more. And it's just such a fun, playful wheel. All right, so the Derive came with Viral's new carbon mountain bike fork. And man, this thing, it's huge. Look at it, 490 millimeter axle to crown. And it looks and measures very similar to the Envy mountain fork, but Viral's fork is 160 less dollars and rides extremely well. I actually really like this style of fork. The long axle to crown helps mimic a shorter travel suspension fork, almost, uh, but also helps dampen trail or road chatter such as washboards. That said, when I put on my Fox 34 120 millimeter fork on, it kind of gave this bike a bit more capabilities in life, and it put me in a more upright position with a 530 millimeter axle to crown minus uh, a little bit of sag. So that suspension fork really created a nice sweet spot for my riding. Uh, style, I guess, um, because I can easily lock it out when I'm riding pavement, but unlock it when I get to single track. I think the carbon fork has a time and a place. And if you're planning on doing mostly dirt road riding, it's definitely a great option. But if you're hitting some rough two track or some single track like I did on the Queen's Ransom in Arizona, I highly suggest going with a suspension fork on this bike. Paired with the geometry, you are certain to have a blast on descents. Either way, it's really nice to have two options. So if you missed my video on the pinion system, you can find that in the description below. It gives a pretty good overview of the drivetrain, including what I like about it and what I don't. But it was clear to Steve that he enjoyed it so much that he adopted the pinion drivetrain on both of his bikes, whereas many of the bike manufacturers in the world have brushed it off. As I mentioned in the pinion review, the derive is built around the frame, which means that the bike needs to be specific specifically engineered around the gearbox. So Steve mentions that the frame alignment is crucial for the bottom bracket axis to be parallel to the rear hub axis. So because of this, he actually does things a bit different from most pinion manufacturers. Uh, he actually uses a cast piece of titanium that is then CNC to ensure proper fitment with the pinion gearbox. Steve mentions that some other manufacturers are just making a plate and then welding on the threaded barrels to the plate for pinion mounts. So for what it's worth, during my pinion testing, I ended up swapping from the nine to 12 speed and back to the nine speed. And it indeed is a perfect fit, making very easy install and uninstall of the gearbox. Now, after riding the pinion driver over the course of a few months, it's really been a blast and it's pretty eye-opening to try something completely different. Yes, there is a bit of resistance. It's heavy and expensive, but there are reasons for these things like making a more durable and rather maintenance-free drivetrain. Plus, the gear range is really, really hard to ignore. And if you watch my pinion video, I mentioned that there was some flex in the belt, but after throwing a Industry 9 rear hub on the bike, I realized that the play or that give or that flex that I was talking about was in the Onyx rear hub and not in the carbon belt. So opposed to this skeptic, which is Viral's more aggressive 
massive hardtail built around a 150 millimeter fork, the Derive is certainly well suited for bike packing. So we have a really nicely balanced geometry that's actually really fun to descend on and it still climbs pretty well. You have great tire clearance, but you also have plenty of mounts on this bike for things. The frame comes with rear rack and fender mounts. You've got two bottle mounts within the frame for direct mount frame bag or bottles and three pack mounts on the down tube, which has since been updated from this particular version. The frame also comes ready for a direct mount top tube bag, or I guess a direct mount GPS mount that's on there right now. I must say, if you are building a bike packing bike, that's a standard feature now. And it's probably one of my favorite features, so I definitely appreciate that. And what we've seen with more of these modern hardtails is you've got a longer front center, sloping top tube, rather short seat tube so that you can have a large amount of dropper post. Because of that, the front triangle space is typically a little bit smaller now. Um, but I would say there's pretty good space on this particular frame. It was still large enough for a stove, uh, two liters of water, snacks, and a few other odds and ends. And if you opt for that carbon fork, you have three pack mounts on each side, and it also has internal dynamo routing. And I tested a pre-production fork, so it didn't come with the fender mounts, but the production fork comes with uh, fender mounts both on the back of the crown and inside each fork leg. Overall, these options really give you a lot of flexibility when it comes to bike packing, which is always welcomed. All right, so as I mentioned, this particular bike, it just feels great loaded. It's meant to be loaded. And while the pinion is heavier and it has a bit more resistance, that is definitely quickly washed away when you load this thing up. It feels extremely grounded and stable, and it almost brings more life out of the titanium tube set. And paired with those 27.5 inch wheels, it allows for a bit more volume, which not only helps with comfort, but it also gave me quite a bit more confidence. If I was to imagine the perfect bike built around the pinion, well, I feel like I found it. I feel like this is it. Am I sold on the pinion driver? Not really, but I also don't hate it. And it makes a lot of sense if you are someone wanting simplicity and a long lasting bike with very minimal maintenance. And the Derive overall was definitely designed to be comfortable, stable, and playful. And it put me in a very nice and ready position, allowing me to kind of stay comfortably seated for technical and steep climbs. Yet it's super ready and instantly positioned me well uh, when the riding trended downhill. I was pleasantly surprised at how well this thing managed technical descents. So I don't often say I love a bike that I review and I won't right now, but there is not much to hate about the viral Derive. That all said, you will be paying a premium for the pinion belt drive and a well-crafted titanium frame set. The Derive frame starts at 4,795 US deep. This all includes obviously the frame and the gearbox, CNC cranks, uh, the shifter, all of the mounting hardware, a spacer kit for single speed rear cog to fit the full size cassette body, uh, the lock ring tool, and one oil change. So what do y'all think about the viral Derive? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like what you saw in this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell and consider joining the Bikepacking Collective. Support from our members sustains this channel and everything we do at bikepacking.com, which includes original routes, reviews, resources, and much more. Collective memberships include the Bikepacking Journal twice a year, among other things. So click on the link in the top right corner for more information. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, pedal further.